Welcome to part 5 of the Python Basics tutorial series. In part 3, we went over the if statement. In part 4, the else statement. So for part 5, we're going to go over the elif statement. So just a brief review. So for the if statement, you have an if, some sort of conditional which will either be evaluated to true or false, if the condition is evaluated as true, if you had something like this, it'll print your integer is even or whatever you have indented below. If this happened to be false, then it'll ignore the code indented below the if statement and move on to the rest of the code. If you happen to have something like an if else combination where the if statement is evaluated to being false, the conditional for the if statement is evaluated to being false, then you'll execute the code uh, that's indented below the else statement. Okay? So let's get on to the elif statement. And the best way to go over something is to go over examples. So briefly, an elif statement is something that must be after an if statement. Okay? Elif statements allow you to check multiple expressions for true and execute a block of code as soon as one of the conditions about it is to true. The real benefit of this is, unlike an else statement where you can just have one as kind of like a catch-all after you evaluate everything above it, the elif statement allows you to have multiple of them. So for an example we'll go over in a little bit, I have an if statement and then I have five elif statements versus an else you can only have a maximum of one. Okay? So let's go over an example. So if I assign 10 to the variable num, I have an if statement, which just happens to be a uh, conditional that's false, so it'll move on to the elif. And then this happens to evaluate to being false too, so it'll just print the catch all. So the way it works is the way like if, elif, else logic works is as soon as something is evaluated as true, then it's going to skip everything else. So if I had assigned 60 to the variable num, then this conditional is going to be true, and it'll just print num is larger than 50 and ignore all this. I, if I had something like 21 assigned to num in this case, um, because this conditional is going to be evaluated as false, it'll move on to the elif statement, and because 21 is equal to 21, then it's going to print the code indented after the elif, and it'll ignore the code further down below. Okay, so one thing I briefly want to go over is the modulo operator. So when we went over even and odd numbers in part four, um, an integer can either be an even or odd number. If you can divide it exactly by two, it's even. If you can't, it's odd, okay? So the way the modulo operator works is if I had something like six, um, divided by 2, I would get 3.0 or 3 remainder 0. If I had um, 6 modulo 2, um, 6 divided by 2 is 3, remainder 0, and modulo just gets you the remainder. Also, if I had something like 5 modulo 2, um, 5 divided by 2 is 2 remainder 1, so modulo just gives you the remainder, which is 1. Okay, so if I had an odd number assigned to my num, um, it'll basically just see this as a false condition, go down to the elif, and then it'll print your number is odd. Also, if you had like something like a float, because a float is not even or odd, it'll automatically just go down to the else statement code because everything above it has been evaluated as false. So one of the real powers of an elif statement is you can check more than just one condition. So an if statement, you can, I guess you can just do a if this or this kind of logic with an if. But if I had something like a, a dice, some sort of dice, and I um, want to do something based on if I roll a 2, um, I'll execute one portion of my code. If I roll a 4, another portion, it allows you um, more options with your logic. So if I uh, set 3 to the variable dice value, then everything above this would have evaluated as false for the conditions. And then as soon as it runs into a, a true condition, it'll say you rolled a great job. So very briefly, in part one, we went over um, string methods. 
So a default method for string is format, where it'll take my variable and just insert it in these little brackets. Okay, and similarly, if I put in something that doesn't make any sense for a dice value, like um, Michael, it'll just automatically go to the else because everything evaluated as false above it. Okay. Okay, so I find the best way to do something is to have a task uh, to reinforce knowledge. So we're going to go over something that's uh, similar to the FizzBuzz problem, which is basically a very simple interview question that's used to like weed out people during interviews. Okay, so part of the first part of the task is to assign num to an integer value. Okay, and this is something we've done all throughout the series. So I'll assign it. Uh, 3 to the variable num, okay? This is answering task 1. Oops. An integer value, okay? And this is just a comment, a single long line comment, okay? And then for part 2, we have to write a series of if, elif, and l el statements that will print the number you, you assigned. So in the end, we should have some sort of product like this, where if I assign three to the variable num, um, it would print this, assuming uh, it's not a multiple of three for which we'll print fizz uh, instead of the number. And for multiples of five, it'll print buzz. For numbers which are both multiples of three and five, it'll print fizz buzz. So multiples um, are a little tricky. And the best way to approach these is use the modulo operator, where when we had something before, like 6 divided by 2, it's 3 remainder 0. And uh, 6 is a multiple of 3. OK? And so on and so forth. OK? So let's go over this. So the first thing you want to do is tackle the more, most complex condition. So for numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5, print fizzbuzz. And the way to do that is with the AND operator. Okay, And in part 3, I put a list of these logical operators where I had AND. If both the operands are true, then the condition becomes true. So true and true is true. Okay, If you're struggling with that, um, that's in part 3 of the tutorial. Okay. So if, um, let's see, num modulo 3 is equal to 0, and if num modulo 5 is equal to 0, we're going to print doo -doo -doo, fizzbuzz. OK? The next thing to do is to evaluate what else the problem wants. So it says, for, but for multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number, and for multiples of 5, print buzz. So the next part we can do in either order. So if we had something like uh, elif num modulo 3 is equal to 0, they're going to want us to print fizz. And then if we had a just strictly a multiple of uh, 5, we're going to print buzz. OK. So we're not done with the task yet. So basically, we just have to answer the else statement. So the original task wanted us, just in the first line, to use a series of if, elif, and else statements that will print the number you assigned. Um, what trips a lot of people up is this part afterward. Um, but now we just have to do the easiest part of the task, which will just be the base condition, um, the catch-all. If all these conditions evaluate as false, then we'll do um, the base condition, which is the else, the catch-all condition, basically. So else, we're going to print our num, OK? So let's see. If I have a number that's a multiple of 3 and 5, like let's say 15, it's going to print fizzbuzz, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, one thing I want to point out is you could also typecast 
because we're just printing things out to the console, it doesn't matter too much, but this typecasting changes the integer, like 15 in this case, or integer, let's say, uh, 1. It'll change it from an int to a string. Okay, and that's it for this part of this tutorial series. Next, we're going to go over lists. And that's it. Please subscribe. I should mention I will have this code on my GitHub, and I'll leave a link down below.